The following session is a second parter of a conversation about Peter Pan. If you haven't already done so, please watch the previous part to understand the full context. And remember, there are always good reasons to have faith. You had faith that this second part would come, right? The animation studio that brought you beloved family classics has now introduced a streaming service, Disney Plus. And now, from the same community that brought you Reactaholics podcast, comes a new show where we discuss Disney Plus content old and new. Disney Plus Pals, starring AJ Heath, Darth Potter, a.k.a. Will Santiago, Scott Meyer, a.k.a. Callum McCritchie, and of course your main host, Dr. Neil DePuss, a.k.a. Neil Michael Burris. Welcome to Disney Plus Pals. And you're not getting cut loose until you go get her. Fast forward to Peter and Wendy. They're at the Mermaid Lagoon. Once again, Wendy's getting herself into trouble because she's naive. She almost gets drowned. <laughs> the mermaids are much, much darker in other adaptations, but here they're just like, ha ha, splash you, ha ha ha. Specific. Well, here's the thing, though. We, in the Broadway musical and the 2003 movie, they are rightfully really scary. But here's the thing. If I were Wendy and I see these really scary looking mermaids, I ain't going near them. It makes sense for them to be pretty, because then Wendy would want to go near them. They specifically say in the 2003 version, Mermaids are not like the ones you read in the fairy tales. Peter's got a serious look, and Wendy's like, Are we going to see the mermaids? Peter just gives her the look like... And then they... If I were Peter in that movie, I would have been like, Yeah, we're just not going into Mermaid Lagoon. It's not a good idea. And then Tiger Lily would have drowned, and then the movie's over. <laughs> <laughs> um... <clears throat> Um, what else is there to say? Oh yeah, something else I should notice about uh, Murray, specifically about Peter himself. Um, Peter has a lot of interaction with uh, ladies, and even he acknowledges that, particularly in the sequel, uh, briefly. Um, he interacts a lot with uh, Tinkerbell and Tiger Lily and the mermaids and Wendy, but uh, he only takes an adolescent interest in the girls, unlike his uh, Greek counterpart. <laughs> No, 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 let's just, let's just we'll slip on past that. <laughs> oh, sorry, you're, you're calling me out for the, the sex references now? He's a child! <laughs> so, we get to what is one of my favorite scenes in the movie, which is Skull Rock Cave. Yes, Peter and we Wendy there... notice that uh, they spot Hook and Smee taking Tiger Lily captive with TikTok, not the croc not far behind. This is where we get the codfish joke. Peter Pan is always calling Hook a codfish, and he loves it. <laughs> well, Hook doesn't love it, but Peter loves it. And this is where, so to save Tiger Lily, Peter gets Hook away from Smee, and then impersonates Hook. He first is like, I am the ocean god guy. Get away. <laughs> I'll kill you. Also, Hook something else worth, worth noting. Like, Ahoy, Mr. Ahoy, Mr. Smee! It's, a, it's me, Cap Captain Hook! Uh, hey! Let go of that Native American lady and just, you know, oh, let her go, man! Come on! <laughs> uh, so he does that and then Smee sees him and he's like, What are you doing? Put her back! And then he's like, What are you doing? Put her back! It's a good back and forth. Yes, um, really fun prank. If I were Peter Pan, I would do the voice impressions easily. Peter Pan's like the original voice impressionist. <laughs> um, now, could no, because no blank, no blank. I'm just saying, no blank was a really good voice actor and oh, impressionist. Yeah. Oh yeah. But Peter sounded exactly like Captain Hook. Mr. And he achieved this. He achieved this by talking into his hat. To make it echo. That's not talent. That's magic. Um, well, he impersonates the Native American chief later on as well, saying, how, in, in that deep voice. Um, very. So I think he's a really good voice actor as well. Um, there's something I've noticed about the scene. Uh, again, this is from the, the book by Mark Pinsky that I read about. Um, when Hook is interrogating Tiger Lily, he specifically mentions, there's no path through water to the happy hunting ground. Basically, Lily is risking her access to Native American heaven just to help Peter. I think, mean, wow. Oh. Yeah, Native American yeah. theology for you Wait. there. So the books are decidedly less racist. 
That's good to know. Yeah. So okay. anyways, moving on to the scene, because it's such a perfect scene. There is slapstick, there's comedy, there's a really good action scene. Peter almost dies, Hulk almost dies, and then the best character returns. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, this scene cracked me up when I was watching it again, yes. TikTok croc. Back again. Like freaking... Like freaking Captain Marvel zooming in to hit the ship. He's just like, hey, I can eat Captain Hook today. He gets in there, and this crocodile is the best thing ever. Just when he eats freaking Captain Hook, <laughs> and the Captain Hook pulls his jaws apart, he's like outfit is all ripped and he's just like Smee! <laughs> um the bit that just made me burst out laughing was uh, just Smee is just t- desperately trying to get the oars in place soaring his glasses trying to stumble on the boat and just as it's all happening and then another bit that really cracks me up is Hook gets out the mouth Smee! and then Smee accidentally smacks him <laughs> another beautiful attention to detail that happened with these old Disney movies is there's a scene where Peter, where Captain Hook hooks uh, Peter's hat, like he, he gets it on his on his hook, and then Peter is flying around for, for a little bit without his hat, but then he comes back, goes straight up in Hook's face, up the hook, gets his hat back on his head and keeps flying, and it's all such a fluid motion. And it looks so good. The animators had to think about all of this, and they're drawing it frame by frame. It's it's just so remarkable. You can get a, a little hint about their part. creativity with uh, the documentary, which you can view in Disney Plus, called Frank and Ollie, where they briefly mention the scene with Hook and Smee, where he's playing the piano with Tinkerbell. It's a, it's a beautiful scene. Like, yeah. the, uh, the cave scene is just perfect. If you have a kid who fell in love with this movie, they probably love this scene. This scene, and another one we'll get to... <laughs> So, after this, Tiger Lily is saved. Should, should also mention that Wendy uh, reminds Peter to pay attention several times. Uh, Wendy says, Peter, look out! To get Peter to pay attention to the fact that Hook's about to stab him. Good on you, Wendy. Uh, keep Peter here on your attention. And then Peter does the I, crow I spe- thing. And, um, I specifically like the fact that Wendy is not okay with Hook being eaten by the crocodile, but Peter Pan is uncomfortably cool. Because he's like, a psycho. Yeah. Maybe it's all connected. <laughs> Maybe this so, is... Um, Peter Pan from uh, from Once Upon a Time, just later in his life. Speaking of Peter Pan as a psychopath, Wendy also has to remind Peter to rescue Tiger Lily. And Peter's like, oh yeah! Phew! And manages to save her just in time. Oh yeah, wasn't she drowning? <laughs> yes. Well, she was beginning to drown. Peter Pan. Not a good guy, but a pretty good guy. <laughs> and Peter Pan, you are a good guy, but that does not mean you're a good guy. <laughs> Let's just skip the I whole Native American scene. <laughs> well, we can skip the Indians because there isn't really a lot there except for racism. It's still very beautiful. Racism, but it, it's pretty racism at times. <laughs> and the backgrounds are pretty. High. Don't don't forget the fact that everyone gets high. <laughs> yeah. More weed. Yeah, they do that. Um, Every, everybody smokes. Children smoking. Everyone gets embarrassed. And even the Disney fans get embarrassed. And now you know Michael. why the Disney fans are red. <laughs> Michael and John start getting homesick. And Wendy's like, well, we gotta go home. And Peter's fans like, no, no, this is your home. And she's like, no, no, you, we need our real parents. And this is where Wendy is, is starting to learn. Like She's like, no, no, I, I do have to grow up. I do. I have to be mature here for them. I'm the oldest. My dog is just like, talk about Nana the dog again, please. <laughs> she... When there's a smile in your heart. Um, so... <laughs> so yeah, we have to leave. I'm sorry, Peter. And Hook has figured out where they are. And they're all getting ready to leave. They're going to take the Lost Boys too. Um, this is where Hook goes all stinky. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, and then the human cut, and then the humans blow up the the Navi Street. Wait, sorry, wrong. <laughs> it's on Disney Plus, so I can't blame you there. That it is. There's um, a whole theme park about them too. Well, yeah. So go ahead. When, go. Wendy is um, describing mothers like heaven on earth, which is deep and. She's singing this song, and um, which is so moving that even the pirates who are just outside are crying. And according to Mark Pinsky's book, the pirates too are lost boys. 
This is where we get a very cool scene. Actually, I forgot to say it. Captain Hook gets a cool scene. And this is where we realize that Captain Hook is not just a dunderhead. <laughs> he is a tactician. He is smart. He manipulates Tinkerbell into telling him where, where Peter is because he's like, oh, no, you don't understand. I'll get rid of Wendy. You'll be fine. All while playing a piano. It's a good scene. It's a very good scene. Boom, 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 uh, boom, Will, bing. do you have yeah. any thoughts on scenes? Or do you want to talk about the plot, son? You got anything to say, my buddy? Got any uh, thoughts? I like the plot yeah. between Hook and the Crocodile. It's the best part of the movie. <laughs> me that Smee is not in the closet for Captain Hook. No one I, here's the thing, and I think I can convince you. I don't think he's in the closet at all. <laughs> I think they know. I think they're aware. I'm, I'm going to edit think... this part out. There's nothing you can do about it, boys. You edit this part out and I'll delete it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You believe it. <laughs> now, now, be you leave this too. You leave this too. <laughs> Let them laugh. <laughs> Um, you know, speaking of Smee and Hook, they've got other brilliant slapstick, especially when Smee thinks that Hook wants to run away to the Spanish mines, but then Hook just tells him, like, Smee, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing that. No, no, Smee. Find Tinkerbell and bring her to me. I understand. <laughs> but fast forwarding a little bit, we get back to the scene. Mindy and them is like, we gotta leave. And Peter has accepted it begrudgingly. He's angry. He goes to sleep. On his hammock. And Hook poisons medicine, right? Um, well, poison medicine was in other adaptations, but in this adaptation, probably because they wanted to make it more friendly, I don't know, either way, it's still an assassin attempt. Um, Hook swears not to lay a finger or a sword or anything on Peter Pan, and he is true to his word. He's just gonna blow him up, up now. Oh, it's a bomb, it's a cake, I remember. Yes. It's like, it's like a cake with a bomb in it, which actually is a reference to the original story as well. Because Hook does put a bomb in a cake, but it's towards the beginning, I think. Okay. So, Tinkerbell gets hurt. Her light's going out. She'd be dying. But she saves Peter. And, Peter. and in the Broadway play, this is where the audience claps to bring her back to life. We don't clap here. I don't remember how she gets brought back to life here. What happens? In the 2003 <laughs> version, the Peter Broadway keeps player. praying, no, I do she, believe she, in fairies. Wait, I, wait, 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 Will, what was that? No, I'm saying, Neil, you're actually wrong. People are clapping because they're glad that Tinkerbell is dead because they secretly hate her. <laughs> um, but then they realize that the clapping was actually bringing her back to life, and they're like, oh, shit. And then they're just angry, so they clap harder at that scene. Well, like, redemp ah! redemption. <laughs> oh, but the, the 2003 version of getting Tinkerbell back to life, that is so epic. Oh, yeah. Don't get us out of the I do. I do. I do oh, believe in fairies. I do. I do. And then you get, I think it's Captain Hook who does it, who's just like, I do believe in fairies! I do! I do! I love it when the pirates go up to the children, Shut up or I'll get you through! Believe in fairies! I do, I do! <laughs> uh, we should have made this whole podcast about that one, but... <laughs> We get so, tattoo promotions how, how now. Back? How does how does Tink come back to life? Not really explained. Peter just kind of they says sorry, and then machina. they just escape the debris. Very ex machina. Magic. Ah. It was magic. So, yeah, the pirates ah. then promote life as a criminal pirate to the boys, or else they'll walk the plank. For obvious reasons, the boys are willing to oblige, but Wendy being the motherly figure that she is, insists, nope, nope, you're not going to become a criminal. And so she's brave enough. And, and this is where she's come far. She's not following people blindly anymore. She's like, no, I'm standing up for what I think. We came here. We're not going to be stuck here. We're going home. You are good, honest gentlemen. I will not let you be pirates. That's it, Callum. You can continue. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, she's approaching the plank, stares at the heavens, sees 
uh, preparing to make an example, he uh, dives off, and then they're all eager to listen, but then, no splash! No splash, they all think, but of course, Peter Pan managed to swoop in and save Wendy. This is where we get a cameo by a character named Starkey, who is more important in the play. But here, he's just, like, killed by being thrown off the ship. <laughs> And uh, this whole scene is really good. You just see Peter flying around. He's got Wendy. He's just going around the ship. He's getting the weapons and stuff. It's just such a good scene. And then, lo and behold, the tides turn. The battle begins. Michael puts a cannonball all inside of his teddy. And that is screwed up because he totally hits people in the head with that and they should be dead. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention the fact that a toddler can even carry that thing. He must be really you strong. Two, you two are not going to be pirates. Murderers? That's a different story. <laughs> We're all going to murder before today is done. Let's just go to the cannibal place to do that. <laughs> Killing is okay as long as you have a good reason to do it. I think is okay as long as you don't say R. Wendy, how do we kill them? Well, Michael, <laughs> I think a good idea is you, you know how you have that teddy bear. Maybe take that shit, put a cannonball in it, <laughs> and just hit someone in the freaking head. You'll be breaking one of the Ten Commandments with style, Michael. You may be a murderer, but realize this. You're not a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> what isn't that all that matters? <laughs> when, Wendy, I think you're going to be a bad mother. <laughs> I'm 12. <laughs> that happens in the movie. <laughs> yeah. You yes, had cannon. <laughs> Wendy. <laughs> Wendy promotes work. <laughs> yeah. When <laughs> Captain Hook is just like, maybe she should have been the pirate. Oh, man. She's also part of the 2003 version. But this is where the big fight happens. There's all these really good scenes. And this is some of the stuff Fantasmic pulled through. When Peter is up in the rafters, when Hook is, like, cutting the ropes and stuff. It's just a great action scene. This is definitely a swashbuckling adventure mm. for... Uh, for kids, it? like, for boys, this had to be the thing. Like, everyone else had Disney princesses. We had Peter Pan. And later on, we had other people in the Renaissance, like Aladdin, Hercules, and Tarzan. And um, they even formed a very short-lived uh, merchandise called Disney Adventurers, where they had um, Tarzan, Hercules, Aladdin, Peter Pan, and, oddly enough, Captain Hook as a lineup for the boys. Captain Hook was with the good guys? Yeah, apparently they were promoting um, uh, these toys with where they were male um, titular characters, and for some reason Captain Hook was in there, but he's a swashbuckler, so I guess it's complimentary with Peter Pan, I guess? Well, you gotta realize. I mean, all of those people you said, they murder, so they're connected by that. <laughs> Tarzan killed the one guy who wears yellow. Hercules killed the Hydra. Peter killed Hook's hand. <laughs> Peter might be the one who hasn't killed anybody, actually. Um, I'll, uh, also, no parents die in this Disney movie. Hooray! I mean, Peter's parents might be dead. Oh. Peter's parents are You just had to spoil everything, Will. I mean, to be fair, like, I'm sure a lot of the Lost Boys parents, like, Hook's parents could be dead. Were, weren't the Lost Boys originally orphans before they got to Neverland? Yeah. You know what? Let's just say no, no confirmed parent deaths, but it's probably still parents. So, so congrats, Mickey, you left it big. Me and the pirates escape, and Hook calls out Peter that he'll just fly away, but then Peter insists that he's such a cool guy, he'll manage to take on Hook, or one on, but then Hook says, You mean you won't fly? And Peter says, No, nope, you, you have my word, I will not fly away this time, I'm going to take you more professionally. Which, by the way, I just want to say, what Peter should have said was, <laughs> I won't fly. Give me a sword so it's a fair fight. I got this dinky-ass knife. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's something I was really wanting to mention. Peter Pan must be a really skilled fighter to be able to take on this experienced pirate captain with a very small dagger. I love that dagger so much. I had it as a kid. He don't... You know what it is? He's cocky. He don't need no sword. Ah, uh, yeah, that would it's explain not, it. It's not the size of what you can do. <laughs> Peter, proves, Peter proves that fighting... 
size does not matter. You heard it here first, fellas. <laughs> 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 Followed by the Jumps crocodile. Out again, because the crocodile is the best thing in this movie. He's just running away, and then he's like, I'm fucking captain. And am I right here? Does Hook run on water away from the uh, crocodile? If I remember at least, like, the only it's not that, like, Hook, like, skips across the water. Like a ricochet. <laughs> I just, I love, I love it. I should also note so that, um, if, if you notice carefully that uh, Peter clearly won, but Hook clearly gets what he deserves when he tried to backstab and kill Peter, but then they say, look out, and then they get Hook to fall in, and the slapstick is there, and then they reclaim the ship and fly home. What I like about the Broadway version is, um, I think they still have that scene where it's, like, no flying, but Peter gets stabbed a bunch. Like, Peter does not get out of the battle unscathed. He, he keeps fight, he fighting, he gets hurt, and we get that like really iconic line, which I don't think is even in this version, but it's so iconic to Peter Pan, to die would be an awfully great adventure. Oh, yeah. yeah I, think, I think that's Hook. Yeah, no, that's, no, no, Peter says it. That's also in the movie Hook. No, in the movie Hook, uh, Peter says to live would be an awfully big adventure. And I specifically remember that because it's Robin Williams that that that's Robert Williams who says it makes me sad. Well, mm. here's the thing. Uh, that is actually a play off this line. Because I know for a fact, in the Broadway version, it's during the Skull Rock for version. Peter got stabbed a bunch. He's lying there. He threw pixie dust on Wendy. She had to fly around. Essentially, Peter has trapped himself. He's left himself for death. He looks to the audience, and the last thing he says is, to die will be an awfully great adventure. And then he falls, and Tiger Lily saves him. That and he, then he also he says that in the 2003 tells everybody film. the story of Hamlet and how it ends with a lot of death. <laughs> That's completely real. <laughs> mm. Freaking loves that Broadway musical. <laughs> but we then look and we hear, Ahoy there, you scurvy dogs! It'd it be me, Captain Hook, but it's actually Peter wearing his clothes because Peter's a weirdo. And now <laughs> Peter's accepted it. He's yeah. accepted. Peter Pan has a character is a character who does not like change. In my perception, the story of Peter Pan, his personal story is he doesn't want the world to change, he doesn't age, and he doesn't want anything else to change. But here he accepts, he, he comes to a compromise. Okay, I'm going to stay in Neverland. I'm not going to change, but you are. The rest of the world is going to change, and I can't stop that. The other but adaptations the are is, much better and deeper back, into we'll this. Stay. Yes. Surprisingly, Peter actually knows consent. That, that, that's good for him. That's good for him. <laughs> Which is why Michael Jackson should have never played him. And it's an out Callum. <laughs> that's one too many Michael Jackson chips, Will. <laughs> You've been hit by a smooth criminal, Neil. <laughs> You've been hooked by <laughs> a smooth criminal, Smee. <laughs> <laughs> They're playing the music in the back with the accordion. Put, 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 put that in somewhere. I don't care where. Maybe that's like an after credit scene while we're in. <laughs> Just Captain Hook Run dances like captain, Michael Jackson. He's got a hook and he's gonna kill you. He's gonna get his hand back. Get away from the TikTok crock. Smee, Smee, shave my face. <laughs> Smee, don't cut my head off. <laughs> Wendy, right, are you right, okay? Right, Wendy, on. Wendy, are you okay? Are you okay, Wendy? Wendy, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, are you okay? No, are you no, okay, no. Wendy? No, no. The, the end credits are to be a, a duet between a, a, a romantic duet between Hook and Smee. <laughs> the power ballad. So Tinkerbell sprinkles the ship um, with the pixie dust, and they manage to fly home in the ship. Another beautiful image. Probably a bad thing, though, because in the sequel, Hook's ship can just fly now. Too much <laughs> pixie dust. Peter unintentionally gave him that weapon. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's a beautiful sight of just seeing like England and this giant ship coming through, covered in gold in the stars. You gotta love it's the bold colors in this movie in general. There's a reason we chose this one first. It's a, 
it's a perfect example of the Disney animated movies at their best when they're when they're the mo- most beautiful. Also, the Disney princess movies, but we'll get to those. This was hand drawn. We wanted to do it first. Wait a minute, Princess Tiger Lily should be part of the lineup. Racism, racism. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Princess Leia and Shuri should be in the lineup too. I'll just let it go for now, but they should be. They weren't in Regret Ralph. Just saying. Anne Hathaway's character should be part of the lineup. Go. <laughs> so our final scene is Wendy at the window and the super dangerous. I think this is it. Correct me if I'm wrong. But it's her at the window, the super dangerous window, saying that she'll continue to tell the stories of Peter Pan and falling asleep at the window. <laughs> Apparently, um, the darling couple um have been having a conversation, and they mutually agree that. Uh, Wendy can indeed stay in the nursery for a little bit longer, but to their surprise, Wendy is ready to grow up. Uh, Wendy's okay with going because, like, I think here two things have happened. Number one, Wendy has accepted growing up isn't a bad thing. And second of all, Wendy also realizes me going to a different room isn't me growing up. I decide what I keep and what what I take. And I am going to let go of some of my childish aspects, but I'm going to keep some of them too. I'm going to keep telling stories. And the actor who played John Darling finally gets to be a bit sympathetic as he finally has a nostalgic flashback to Neverland when he sees this uh, strange cloud shaped like a ship. Once, once again, the story of Peter Pan is all about compromise. Wendy's like, okay, I'll grow up, but I'm still going to keep parts of my childhood. I'm still going to tell stories. I'm going to become a better person, and I, I, I am going to like be an adult. But I'm going to do it my way. And Just like Frank Sinatra. Guys. <laughs> Tell me why I'm going to go to Neverland. Tell me why I'm going to cut off Hook's hand. Tell me why he cut off the Captain Hook's head away. <laughs> I want it that way. I like that. So that brings us to the end of Peter Pan, a classic. Because there's still stuff to talk about. For example, here's our review section. Review Peter Pan. What? Wait, wait, wait this was the review? We, we were going through and pointing out some beautiful parts. But here's final thoughts. What did you think about Peter Pan? Who wants to go first? Well, um, you seem eager. Okay. Um, I will say it's not one of my favorite Disney movies, like mm. even, even among that era. Or like when I think of the truly great Disney movies of that era, I think Fantasia, oh, Pinocchio, yes. Bambi, Alice in Wonderland, Mary Poppins, those are the ones I think. Peter Pan isn't really one that comes to mind. Uh, I mean, with all that said, though, it is still a really good adventure story mm. for kids. Uh, um, the the only only part of it that's really outdated is <laughs> the stuff with the Americans. Um, yeah. But other, when did but we first that, say how? <laughs> but, <laughs> Go ahead. Well, but um, other than that, it's pretty much a timeless movie. Um, um, it, it it does have some meat on its bones, as like you know, uh, Neil has clearly pointed out, though. Probably not as much being on his bones as like you know some of the ones that I just mentioned. And Hook and Smear are totally in relationship, and Peter Pan. Like, <laughs> when on Hook earth do you? Uh, okay, why? There are two kinds of canon: the main story canon and the fan canon, and every viewer's head canon. No, that and sometimes, no, 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 sometimes no. the two intersect. <laughs> No. And maybe it's real, maybe it's not. Maybe we can all dream. Sneeze! <laughs> I love you! Sneeze okay, an old man! I think it's just, these two fictional characters probably don't date. <laughs> That's exactly right. I mean, Sneeze an old man. Sneeze is not an old man. He is a young man looking for love. <laughs> and he has found it, Captain Hook. Um, I was going to say something, but I completely forgotten what I was going to say. Well, why don't you say your final thoughts on the movie? Mm, yeah. <clears throat> I agree with Darth Potter. When I think of the greatest Disney movies of all time, Peter Pan is probably not the first one that's going to come to mind. But even despite some dated parts, um, it's still a very enjoyable adventure. 
and it still got really funny slapstick. It had me hysterically laughing when I was watching those parts. It's got beautiful animation. You've given me some insight in how imaginative it is. And this did make an impact. And when people think of Peter Pan, they generally think of this version. That's what Disney are really good at, reinterpreting these fairy tales and making it their own spin on it to make it family friendly. Um, now, I will have to say, there are other adaptations probably influenced by this film that do the Peter Pan story much better justice and do it better. My favorite iteration of Peter Pan has to be the 2003 movie. That is just amazing. Um, there's the really? effects and um, the general structure of the story. And they get into some deep emotional stuff like uh, Peter Pan having a bit of a crush on Wendy and him having to realize that Wendy's going to grow up and hook manages to catch on to this and during a fight he points out that Wendy's going to grow up and Peter gets all emotional over it this scenes like that that just really escalate that version and the music is also fantastic and I already mentioned the I do believe in fairy scene that that is also it's when I but, but with this with this version yeah final thoughts um it's fun and um you're guaranteed to have a good time when you're watching this that's and that's the best thing I can say. You're guaranteed to have a good time when you're watching this version. Here, here's the thing. I both agree and disagree with you guys. I think that this is one of the Disney greats. I think it's not talked about enough. I think there's a reason we keep seeing Tinkerbell. I think that it's one of my favorite Disney movies. Probably my favorite of the animated ones. Um, except, you know, there's also a certain Disney princess <laughs> that uh, we'll get to talk about. Uh, I won't spoil who, but this one has a sword. <laughs> um, it's, it's Rapunzel. <laughs> it's Rapunzel? What'd you say? <laughs> Does Rapunzel use a sword at one point? I don't... I, I think she's she a pan. A fire That's fire even better than a sword. I really thought you said it's Jon Snow. My favorite Disney princess is Jon Snow from Game of Thrones. I mean, he's my princess. <laughs> yeah, he's a lot of people's princess. But no, it's Mulan. <laughs> no more secrets, it's Mulan. Um, but with this movie, I do think it's legitimately very good. I forgot how good it was. And then I watched it again, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is a classic. If I ever have kids... First of all, God help them. But <laughs> if I have kids, um, th this is a must. I'm going to show it to them instantly. But the, the thing I come to is, even though I disagree that it, I, I do think this is one of the Disney greats. Do I think this is the best telling of the story? No. I, I love this telling. It's really good. But Callum brought up the 2003 version. I really love that. My favorite will always be the Kathy Rigby version. <laughs> because it, it, like the songs are really memorable. The flying is like top notch. And it's just great. Everybody go watch it. But yeah, I, I do love this movie. But I can't in good consciousness say it's the best Peter Pan story. That being said, 100% recommend it. <laughs> like uh -huh. if you've never seen Peter Pan... First of all, what's wrong with you? Second of all, go watch that and also watch the sequel, which we'll probably be talking about in the future. Mm -hmm. I like the sequel. I really do too. We'll get to that. Although it did do the most <laughs> heinous sin imaginable. What? They removed they removed TikTok Croc. <laughs> so they did. And and they injected and they injected bad two thousands pop songs. I can't. For, I can forgive that. I can forgive that too. I, I, I actually like that song. The lost of TikTok Croc, our hero. <laughs> but with that said, yeah, that's our thoughts on Disney's Peter Pan. But there's another level to our thoughts here because Disney has a theme park. Yes, we mentioned it at the beginning. This show is not just about movies. It is about the theme park, <clears throat> where we will talk about. Peter Pan's impact on the theme park, but also if we ever have a movie that doesn't have something in the theme parks yet, like for example, that new movie that came out, Hi Pooch, you're okay, I love you. If we ever encounter a movie that has no theme park presence, we'll tell you what we think they should do for theme park presence. But for now, let's talk about 
Peter Pan's Flight. Ah, yes. I love this ride. <laughs> We've all ridden it. I really like this ride. I, I think it's... I think it's what the Disney park used to be. Like, it's a very slow ride. It's not really intended on action. It takes you through the story of the movie. And, oh my gosh, that set where you're over London? Jeez, mm-hmm. oh, dude, that that, dude, that's the coolest thing when I was little. It's like, oh my god, there's cars beneath me. Like, I flew past Big Ben. <laughs> but then Universal kind of outdid that with the... E.T. Right? Like, I'm flying on with E.T. to John Williams' music on a bike. I, I still, still think it's, there's these... They're not... Are they animatronics? Their mouths don't move. I mean, they're, they not, audio, they're not audio animatronics. That that was invented with the Tiki Room. The only one that I'm, like, 100% sure is an animatronic is, like, TikTok Croc. Because doesn't he, like, open his jaws and stuff? Yeah, yeah he does, does that repeatedly. But here, here's the thing, though. We're, we're thinking of the Disney World version. You, I mean, I love the Disney World version. That's the one I grew up with. But you look at the other ones around the world, like specifically uh, Disneyland, California, Paris, and Shanghai. Both ones kind of blow Florida's out of the water, I got to say. Oh, I'm really? not gonna, Are they better? I'm not, I'm not going to say much. Just look them up on YouTube. They're so much better than Florida's versions. That Bruh, awesome. this is a story ver- – this is a spoiler version where we're talking about the theme parks. Go ahead. Say all you want. I'm just going to say um, in a couple of the versions, um, you get to go inside Skull Rock. Oh, that sounds so cool. Yeah, you get to do that in Disneyland Paris as well. Damn it. You don't get to do that in Florida. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, and no, then also, oh, no. in, 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 in the specific case with the Disneyland version, in 2015 for the park's 60th anniversary, they uh, update with projection effects. So in addition to the animatronics, you have like uh, animated projections of Peter Pan, the characters uh, throughout the ride and stuff. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Like where the, where the windows like move and you can see like the darlings. Mm hmm. And I think they added an interactive cue to that one as well. So, I mean, to be fair, it's, I mean, it's a bridge, but if you don't know the story of Peter Pan, you can ride that ride and sort of get out of it. It is cool. Like, it's a very simple ride. It's, it's not like extreme. This isn't like Harry Potter's Forbidden Journey. Gosh, I wish they had that technology at the time. But um, it's a very simple ride. It's nice. It's relaxing. And is it the best ride in the park? No, but no. it's enjoyable. It's a it's a nice experience. It's a nice dark ride, which is fitting. Huh? What do you think, Cal? You've been quiet. You wrote this thing too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm currently just looking at it again, and uh, you were right when it, they are so clever with perspective, and th- they really do recapture the wonder of of just flying from that bedroom all the way to seemingly going higher and higher up. And, then, and they uh, have that music. That music has to do like half the heavy lifting. Like where it's like, when there's a smile in your heart, like just making you feel like you're in the movie. Goodbye, Nana. And then, Does Nana fly? Is that a thing that happens in the ride? I think no, it is. No, 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 we do see her like, like, like she's at her doghouse and she barks at you as you fly above her. Also, I... One thing I do have to question, because there are plenty of rides who, that, like, look at the people in the ride and are like, hey, we're aware you're here. Like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. Mm-hmm. I'm just I'm just wondering, if we break into the Darling's Helm, and now we just have this pirate ship, and we're just cruising about through the story of Peter Pan, just mm-hmm. intruding? Maybe that's my headcanon. We're burglars, and we were here to rob them, but instead we went to Neverland. <laughs> Bye bye. You know um, you know um, uh, actually fun fact about this. So um, when the Peter Pan ride first opened in Disneyland in 1955, Peter Pan was nowhere to be found in the ride. True fact. Huh. Well, I, and, and, that the, and that the reason for that was because of the whole premise behind the ride was that you were supposed supposed to be Peter Pan. Oh, Flying the ship. Yeah. Hmm. 
But it's lame uh, that Peter Pan isn't in Peter Pan's flight, but it's a cool idea. <laughs> yeah, and, but but that's the thing though. That crucial piece of information that you're supposed to be Peter Pan was never communicated directly to the park guests. So for like 30 years, uh, people kept asking, "Where's Peter Pan? Where's Peter Pan? Why isn't Peter Pan in Peter Pan's flight?" And strangely enough, that was the thing, like, every Fantasyland Dark Ride, like, Snow White wasn't in her ride because you were supposed to be her, or the same thing with Mr. Toad and Alice in Wonderland. Um, so, it, but it, so it wasn't until, like, um, the early 80s when they redid Fantasyland that they added all these characters in their own rides because they finally caught on that no one was catching on to this nuance that you were supposed to be the characters. Interesting. <laughs> I mean, that that's a very... That's why we're doing the show, folks. We'll be the theme park guy. This is where he shines. This yep. show literally exists just as an excuse to talk about theme park rides. No. <laughs> partially. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They most Tell him, done. you're ignoring High School Musical. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that it criminally, criminally doesn't have a ride yet. And should. <laughs> Yes. Just imagine that ride where where you are Zac Efron. <laughs> oh, it's just occurred no. to me. Um, in Adventureland, you get to go on um a Captain Hook ship um from time to time, and you can also go to Skull Rock. Yes. He, oh yeah. He was also him and Peter were also part of Fantasmic, which back in the day was my favorite part, where Peter would like fly up to the top and sword fight like Hook on the rafters and then knock him down. And then TikTok Croc would like follow behind them. <laughs> yes. Um. Occasionally I, they'd I be replaced they're... by Pirates of the Caribbean. Yep. Go ahead, Will. Uh, I was about to say what Callum just said that he was replaced with Jack Sparrow. Which Callum loved when I showed Callum and Dasmic. He was like, "Oh my gosh, I love this!" And I was like, "I'm glad one of us does." <laughs> this is a segment of the show I like to call Neil's Merch Review. What? <laughs> I'm not informed about this. You weren't informed because you're not a part of it. <laughs> I'm kidding, obviously. This is where I like to highlight a little piece of merch that you can get from Disney World pertaining to what we're talking about. Today, I would like to honor the Peter Pan, Peter Pan's flight statue. This is a statue of Peter Pan in the vehicle from the ride. He's in the ship. It looks really cool. And it's yeah, like specifically something. What was that? Can get a visual of this, please. Uh, sure. Callum, put it on screen right now. There it is. <laughs> There what? it is, everybody. What? What? You did this. <laughs> you didn't do it right now, but you will have. <laughs> Let's just finish. <laughs> oh, right, so, right, yeah, right. It's, it's a very, it's a very cool statue, and it's of him in the ride vehicle. So it's direct merch, not necessarily for Peter Pan, but for the ride itself. It's awesome. It's cool. So we have reached the end of the theme parks. We've reached the end of the movie, and now for the final section of this, oh, boy. the impact. How has Peter Pan affected Disney and people as a whole? Callum! We've already mentioned uh, the other adaptations, which probably had some inspiration from this uh, Disney. Focus specifically on the Disney version, my boy. Yes, thank you. Um, We've already mentioned the impact of Tinkerbell, and um, uh, Peter Pan obviously got a sequel during the uh, Age of Sequels, which is actually one of the better ones. Um, He's one of the most iconic um, uh, Disney um, characters, especially in the boys' sides of things. And Peter Pan, Captain Hook, and Neverland have made several appearances in the Kingdom Hearts series, where Captain Hook has been a particularly tricky boss fight. That's that's true. I get stuck on that, that shit. But, William, tell us the impact. My dog is uh, hiding. I love you. Go, go, Will. Ignore me. I can never ignore you, Neil. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, I mean, um, th- I think, as with most Disney adaptations this is probably what helped um this is my train here this is probably what helped um, peter pan gain its um following following yes as a timeless story and everything um and i mean for for many people this was their introduction to peter pan it was mine it was neil's it was not callum's introduction because he's an uncultured swine <laughs> <laughs> i have seen it of course in my youth yes <laughs> In my youth. <laughs> in me. But yeah, and, um, I, I, I think for a lot of us, um, I will say it negatively impacted me in one way in that um, I will admit that 
movie did give me a wrong impression of Native Americans and that it was okay to dress up as them and stuff. That's another thing. Um, but I will say it has positively impacted me in that it has um, encouraged me um, to, like, you know, just be more imaginative and everything. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. I, I agree. AJ, now your thoughts. I will edit that in. Not here. Thank you, AJ. I hope you edited that in. <laughs> I will, if she gets the chance. And this you should will. wrap you up this it. episode of well, well, Disney me, Pass me, Pals. Me. I gotta do it. Oh, yes. All right, Neil. Now it's time for your thoughts. Thank you, Neil. You're so pretty. <laughs> Lies. Uh, my heart. It's broken. <laughs> but anyways... Um, I, I think that the impact in my life is clear by everything I have said. Uh, um, my dog's name is Nana, so obviously it has a big impact. Oh, Damn it! <laughs> obviously this has had a personal impact on you, for t- most of all. Yes, but in, in terms of the... Like, if I can be a little blunt, it's not my favorite Disney movie. <laughs> I, I love it. Muppets is so much better. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, um, your favorite, clearly, your favorite Disney movie is Chicken Little, clearly. Oh, of course. High School Musical. <laughs> I, I refuse to... I've got a bop to the top, friends, and that's what that movie did. Belle's Magical World. I do know, I do know the song Fabulous from High School Musical 2, word for word. And with that... If anybody wants to make fun of me for it, go ahead. But... I, I do think that there is a lot of um, good that this movie has infected people with. Like, if you go out on the street, people know who Captain Hook are, and people know who Peter Pan is. And I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna go on the street out and ask people if they know who Captain Hook is. They're gonna know that. <laughs> Precisely. They might not be able to tell you both of Wendy's brothers, but they can get the gist down: Peter Pan, Wendy, Smee, Tinkerbell. I could mention a lot about J.M. Barry and his inspirations, but I think we've said enough. Peter Pan is in a ton of the cruise ride and ship and stuff. And of course, this is a this is a very good telling of J.M. Barry's story as far as I'm concerned. So with that, we move on to the final question. Oh, no. This is a question to end you everything already... off. Here we are, the final question. When you were a kid... Did you try to fly like Peter Pan? Most likely. No, no I, I tried fell to on my face. face. No, I tried to fly like Superman. I fell straight on my face. I hurt myself constantly. I tried to do it on the roof once. I was stopped. Neil, did you just want to do this episode but just so that you could talk about that one moment in your life? You don't know me! <laughs> We have been recording for two hours. It is literally (laughs) after quarter past three in the morning for me here. And we recorded it for just... (laughs) So, Callum, what is the next show we will be doing? The next show we will be doing, we'll be mentioning some other Disney classics. We'll probably, due to the nature of the show, we'll be mentioning some Disney Plus original shows like The Mandalorian and maybe later on The Tramp, I don't know. (laughs) Well, we did discuss the next one. And the next one is going to be Eddie Murphy's Haunted Mansion. (laughs) Yep, we're uh, we're going straight into a bed. (laughs) We did a good one, we're going into a bed. Just so you could talk about the theme park ride more. Yeah, we're going to do that. So, thank you all for watching. I have been the Neil. Callum has been the Callum. Will has been something. And AJ has been AJ. (laughs) Thank you all for watching. See you in the next one. When there's a smile in your heart, there's no better time to start. Zach Efron with basketball, rippling on down the hall. (laughs) You've been watching Disney Plus Pals. Thank you for watching. Please share this with your friends for more fun and magic.